Hello and welcome to the Discover History YouTube channel and as many of you will know we cover any age in history if we're looking at British history we go back as far as the Stone Age going right up to the 1950s we also cover ancient Greece and ancient Egypt as well anyway today we're going to slot in to World War Two and that's down to the fact that we've got a Twitter follower um, whose uh, son I think it was uh, is doing a project at the moment whilst not being at school all about World War Two and um, they had lots of different questions to ask and one of them was all about gas masks so luckily I've brought some of the gas masks that we own in and we'll talk you through it so gas was always a big fear main reason for that was the fact that so many people were either injured and killed by gas during the great war 1914 to 1918 so people believe that if we were going to war again especially a war against germany then gas is likely to be used it's also one of the reasons when the bef went to france for example they all had anti-gas capes they had uh, gas masks and they even had special detectors which were worn on the arm that changed color so people had a great fear that gas was going to be used by 1945 however we know gas was never used against the civilian population in britain um but it was a fear for most of the war um gas masks were given out to people before the war broke out around about 1938 gas masks were actually issued to people this is a perfect example of how people thought a war was approaching um, if you live in worcester for example you could have collected your gas mask from the guild hall you would have also seen posters like this one the most iconic one of the most famous ones hitler will send no warning so always carry your gas mask and in the early days of the war people often got their gas masks in tin containers believe it or not you open the top and there's a gas mask inside very much like how the german army carried their gas masks however because of the shortage of metal during the war uh, most people had their gas masks in the famous cardboard box at christmas time people were encouraged to knit uh, gas mask covers for example people could also buy special handbags to hide their gas masks in to make them fashionable if you're wearing red you can have a red gas mask bag if you're wearing blue you can have a blue one for example but everyone had to know how to wear them and there's lots of posters showing you how to do that this is a standard gas mask that was given to most people they belong to the government throughout the war so technically you're not even allowed to sell them and on the top of the box here we have the word top so you don't get it mixed up a lot of children swung these round these ended up trees some of them left on buses and all sorts of things but this is a standard gas mask and they look like this one no one really liked them people said they had a peculiar smell that was down to the fact that they're made out of rubber and they still have a strong rubbery smell today the little celluloid window on them often steamed up so a lot of people also complain that if they were wearing them steam up and no one would be able to do anything anyway it is interesting to note the only thing that is unbelievably important really is the filter here because it's the filter that cleans the air now when these were first issued there was one filter you can just about see it where I'm holding that there but if you have one of these at home you may notice there is a lot of masking tape around the filter and that's down to the fact that as the war developed there was a bit of a panic especially in the early days that they wouldn't be strong enough so people were actually issued with another filter and that was taped onto the original one just to make sure it would definitely work inside the filter there's all sorts of things asbestos is one of the ingredients in there which is why we can't wear them anymore but in there is charcoal which is very good charcoal still given to people today in hospital to counteract poison there's uh, cotton wool in there there's, there's there's muslin cloth in there and it's all designed so when you breathe in the air with the gas particles in it it will filter it so by the time it reaches your nose mouth and then eventually your lungs it is clean air and it allows the air to go out through the same way and even through the edges of it and it's almost like a one-way valve so that is a gas mask now these had to be fitted correctly which is why you often get 
uh, safety pins on the straps up there they came in three sizes small medium and as I always say big head large and when you were testing these you could ask an air raid warden to come around your house and you had to do a test where you have a piece of cardboard you place it on the filter and you breathe in if the gas mask fitted correctly the cardboard should stay in place without you holding it there so that's one of the tests school children had to practice this uh, all times so this is a class of children wearing gas masks and like I said gas was never used during the war um, against the civilian population like this so these are just wearing them for practice and this happened quite a few times you can imagine how noisy and how uh, stuffy it would have been doing your lessons wearing a gas mask but gas masks were given to absolutely everyone we even have here a child's gas mask and this was specifically designed for children I'm not talking about the teenager we're talking about very young children and this is the iconic Mickey Mouse mask one of the most iconic things that came from the war believe it or not children realize that if they push their lips against the nose piece on the inside and blow it will actually make a raspberrying noise as well point to note here you can see the tape on here holding the extra filter on so it was a big panic as i said that these would not work now if you want to experience what it's like to wear a gas mask you can uh, like i said if you've got one of those please don't wear it but if you take your hands and place them together and then make sure it obscures the whole of the face make sure the fingers are at the top because that's very much like looking through a window and just keep it there for a few moments and what you'll find is your face will become hot well, that's exactly the same as when you're wearing a gas mask you won't be able to see very well when you look around that's exactly like wearing a gas mask you may feel all enclosed well that's exactly what it's like to wear a gas mask and if you chat to someone in your room uh, you will also notice it's very muffled it's very hard to understand what anyone's saying well once again that's what it's like to wear a gas mask so if you want to experience gas mask wearing uh, for a project on World War II just put your hands like this over your face and you will experience a, a small percentage of what it was like to wear a gas mask they also thought of babies which is why not only did you have a gas mask and a Mickey Mouse mask they also developed uh, a, a, a gas hood which is what I've got here and these looking like something out of Doctor Who really uh, were very very good they would work against gas for babies so all I require to demonstrate this is a baby and luckily I do have one in the house not mine but I do have one here and uh, this baby here is used in most of our school workshops when we do uh, World War Two. I even do an activity where children have to rescue the baby from a bombed out building so if anyone watching uh, has been in one of my workshops at a school, uh, you will recognise our little baby here. Unfortunately, we don't actually have a name for our baby. Maybe we'll have to have a little poll and see uh, what the name of the baby is going to be. So you take your baby and remember there may be bombs going off outside, you inside your air raid shelter. And that's important. You would be in an air raid shelter and you will hear the gas rattle this thing would go round and round and round making a hell of a clatter and people would then know to put their gas masks on parents had to put their gas masks on before they put the baby in theirs because what you have to remember is if they breathe in gas and then the baby is not quite in there it would go horribly wrong so they need to look after themselves immediately then they can deal with the baby very very shortly after so imagine we're in an air raid shower, the bombs are falling outside, I've heard the gas rattle, the air raid wardens told me there's gas in the air, I've put my gas masks on, I've taken baby, and I have to fold back, first of all, the gas hood. So I have to open it up, and there is a seat there to put the baby's bottom on. So I then take the baby, sliding the baby's arms and head, because it goes all the way inside, really, up to its waist, inside the gas hood. Once I've done that and the baby is sat on the seat, as you can see just there, I then fold down the hood and there is a drawstring 
so I have to tie this drawstring up nice and tight because just like a gas mask it has to be sealed against the body in this case but against the face on a gas mask it has to be sealed so no gas will slide in or sneak in underneath so we've got the hood tied nice and tight the drawstring is tight there is also a flap at the bottom here that has to go up and this is buckled at the side of the gas mask so remember this has to be done pretty quickly um, because obviously gas is in the air you don't know if it's in your room you don't know if it's in your air raid shelter all you've been told is there's gas in the area and there we have one baby in a correctly fitted gas hood now this doesn't really have much air in it so when the baby's in here you hold the baby and you have to put your hand in the air pump at the side here and we just pump the air into the bag now if you listen very carefully you may just about hear the air going in and out there we go and that will keep the baby happy whilst the gas is around. You would then have to wait until you get the all clear where you can then take the baby out the bag and that means you can actually finally stop pumping air for them. So everyone had a gas mask and it wasn't just uh, people that had gas masks. There were gas masks for all sorts of things. There was horse gas masks. We had those in the Great War. They also developed a gas proof kennel which was designed for small animals, dogs in particular. And it's quite sad because when the war broke out people were told to get rid of their pets, especially cats and dogs, because it would use up valuable food. But more importantly the noise of bombing will turn dogs into mad animals running about screaming and if you have a cat or a dog and you, uh, you, you, you have problems on bonfire, imagine it during the blitz on places like London and Coventry. There were also gas masks for civil defence workers, I've got one of those, I haven't brought it in actually, um, but I've also got here what was called the service respirator. Not a gas mask as such, it is, but in military terms it's called the service respirator. And these very much looked like the ones that they had in the Great War, almost. There's a few differences. That's a video in its own right. So gas was a great fear, a, a, a big risk during the war, and people had to practice putting them on. And like I said, everyone had them. And gas training was also carried out. In Worcester, we were quite fortunate. We had a gas van that would go around, and you could walk in through one door of the van, out through the back door, testing your gas mask. There was also gas mask practices in the city centre with civil defence drills and exercises so hopefully this has been a nice overview of gas masks during World War Two and if you are doing a project on World War Two hopefully this has helped you out especially the baby's gas hood horrible things really but remember to have a little go see how what it's like to be wearing a gas mask it's not nice at all anyway if you want us to do any videos on any period in history, remember we cover the whole lot, do let us know. Facebook, Twitter and Instagram will comment on these videos and stay safe. Stay safe, stay in, have a good weekend and see you soon.